What if you could stockpile a set of spare parts, not for your car, but for your body? You know, extra heart, some fresh lung, a better eye, all grown in a lab from a piece of your skin. The idea sounded like science fiction until a team of doctors at the world-famous Mayo Clinic took a tiny piece of my arm into a lab, turned it into living cardiac tissue, and let me watch it beat at the same rate as the heart in my chest. It is part of a Nobel Prize winning breakthrough spurred by a race to save kids like this. That's my dad and my mom. Meet Sophie. <laughs> 30 pounds of molten cuteness. <laughs> Watching this three year old motor around her Minnesota home, you would never know she was born with half of a functioning heart. How old was she when she had the first surgery? Four days. Four days. Mm -hmm. So her heart was the size of a grape. walnut. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, we got to see it beating inside her chest before they closed it up. Really? Too. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Are you wearing lipstick, or are your lips naturally that rosy? Ooh, that's a great thing to hear. <laughs> <laughs> They're usually nice and blue. <laughs> oh, Sophie. After three open heart surgeries, she's doing well. <laughs> But odds are that Sophie will still need a heart transplant to survive into adulthood. Like Coulter. This is my action figure Han Solo. Born with the same condition, he's had two transplants. That heart's not going to weigh much longer. I'm getting it. And is now on his third heart at age 10. Hang around with kids like this, and you can't help but marvel at the medical talent that can hold off a genetic death sentence. But hang around with the medical talent at the Mayo Clinic, and you'll witness more frustration than pride. Because despite their skills, they know there aren't enough little hearts to go around. There has to be a better way. And Dr. Tim Nelson thinks he knows what it is. We're here to talk today about um, stem cells and regenerative medicine. Yep. Regenerative medicine, the belief that one day doctors will fix our diseased or broken bodies with healthy spare parts grown in a laboratory. Okay, you'll feel a little pressure here. And he's asked for a chunk of my flesh to prove it. And you're put it in that jar. Mm -hmm. A little blob of arm goes into pink liquid and then onto a lab where they will turn my skin cells into the kind of stem cells that formed me as a three-week-old embryo. The kind of stem cells that can then be coaxed into becoming brain or lung or eye or any other part of my body. You can see various things on the bottom of this plate. Looks and these like are the, mold or something. These are human cells that are growing in there that are forming different types of tissue. And we're guiding this tissue into specifically the heart tissue. Yeah. Yeah. Think? It's pulsing. It's beating. So you are actually looking at somebody's heart muscle right now. Wow. And that didn't come from a heart, it came from skin, like mine. But Dr. Nelson has decided the demo would be a lot cooler if I became the first person to come to Mayo and see his own heart beating outside his body. So I promise to return in a few months. Hey, Doc. Mr. Weir. How are you? I'm good. Good to see you again. How you? How's little Bill? Little Bill's doing great. We got some good things to show Really? Oh. Hey, guys. How are you? Hello. So, these are my heart cell babysitters, right? <laughs> these are. This is the house that your cells have been living in for uh, quite a few months. Right. It's not the best accommodations, I guess, but it's <laughs> as good as we've got for them. It's, it's cleaner than my apartment. It's clean. It's warm. <laughs> they get fed every day. Right. So To see what's become of my arm hunk, Dr. Nelson has me saddle up to the microscope. So this is me. You can adjust the eyes here so you can see it, but... This is my heart tissue beating outside my body. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Little Bill is pumping slow. So this is a, a pretty calm, uh, <laughs> calm cell right now. You can see why this kind of medical science just won the Nobel Prize. Why a company like Cellular Dynamics in Madison, Wisconsin is growing billions of cells a day so drug companies can test new medicine on the living tissue of specific patients instead of mice. And without any of the controversy that comes with harvesting stem cells from unborn children. Wow. Oh, man. Now that is cool. 
Dr. Nelson gets most excited when he shows me a tiny piece of my heart tissue that looks exactly like a heart. A pumping, three-dimensional glimpse into a future when this kind of cell could theoretically get injected into a heart attack victim or a diseased child and literally mend broken hearts. This is a functioning tissue. That is the hope. But while these cells could grow hearts or lungs or brains, they could also grow tumors. And it could be years before the science is ready for the first clinical trials on humans. I know you have to be cautious about predictions, but in Sophie's lifetime, could this save her? Could this build her a healthy heart? That's exactly what we're working towards as a program. And she's such a good mommy. She rocks her babies. Right. Plays with them. And then in my heart, I get very sad because will she get to have babies one day? Or is that something she won't get to do? Those are the things that I get to think about and worry about. The science is moving fast, but not fast enough for families like that. Thanks to them. Thanks to the Mayo Clinic. Much more at abcnews.com.